There was a, a tweet that went viral from a woman who was celebrating an abortion she had just had. And the story looks legit to me. The woman took a picture of a cake. The cake said, it's a boy. And then over the Y, she wrote, orted. So it's aborted. And the woman wrote, quote, abortion is health care and also traumatic. So if you do have one, please gather all of your closest friends after to celebrate. Be around endless love and happiness for your decision. Thanks to everyone who came last night. Well, two major problems here with what she just said. I, I suspect, given how sad and desperate this, this post is, I actually suspect this is real. I don't think it's a troll or a setup. She says, you got to be around endless love and happiness. Well, the only way you're going to get endless love and happiness is in, in the life of the world to come, okay? You're only going to get that in eternity in heaven. Here, we live in a finite world. And in a finite world, eventually the party's over. And eventually the friends go home. And eventually the lights go out. And then what are you left with? If you are so desperate to manufacture some artificial sense of celebration and happiness, how long can you keep that up? Eventually, the once the party's over, what are you going to be left with? That same nagging feeling that you were trying to paper over with the balloons and the streamers and the festivities. And what is that nagging feeling? The nagging feeling comes from what you say is a traumatic event. That's my one question here, lady. Why is abortion traumatic? Why is it traumatic? It's health care, you say? It's, it's a good thing. It's something to celebrate. So then why is it traumatic? Well, because it's a difficult decision. Right. Why is it a difficult decision? Well, because it's a, look, it's a complex issue. Sure. Okay. You're just asking, you're just making the same statement over and over again. Why is it a complex issue? Because it involves a mother killing her child. That's why. That's where the trauma comes from. We're not just talking about physical trauma. We're talking about emotional trauma here, right? That's why you've got to be around the love and the happiness and the festivities and everyone tell you, telling you you made the right decision, even though you didn't. So if it is traumatic, if, you know, if you're, you're so, being eaten away from the inside and you just know it's so awful that you've got to try to manufacture some semblance of happiness, how about we just be honest and say you shouldn't have done it in the first place? You're, you're going to be a lot happier if you just fa face up to that. If you have an abortion... That doesn't mean that your life is over and you're condemned to hell and, and you'll never have a moment of happiness or joy again. You actually do have the prospect of happiness and joy available to you, but you've got to be honest with yourself about what you did. And you've got to repent. You have to change your mind. That's what repentance means. It means changing your mind. You have to turn your mind. You have to turn the way you're thinking about it and be honest. And if you're just going to live in delusion and denial and, and beg all of your friends to come and pretend that this horrible, horrific act is somehow other than it is, you're, you're never going to be happy again. That's always going to be eating away at you. There's an abortion activist who, who just made a similar kind of post. Prominent abortion activist. She said, quote, posted a picture of a, of a book called What's an Abortion Anyway? It's a little children's book, and you've got a couple of kids in the background, her kids, I guess. And she says, this has been our family's bedtime story on our vacation this week, as my niece loves this book and reads it to her little sister every night. Okay, I guess it's her niece, nieces. Our family was created by abortion, adoption, and parenting decisions. I love our family. And then she plugs the book. Whatever else might be true or sincere in this woman's understanding of what happened. The one thing that I know for a fact was a lie is that she says our, our family was created by abortion. No family is ever created by abortion. Families are destroyed by abortion. That's all abortion can do because abortion means killing so, someone in your family, right? Presumably it's the, the mother is the one who's getting the abortion. And so the abortion is destroying your family. And it's so ghoulish. I mean, the, the post itself is saying, hey, kids, hey, kids, read this book and be happy I didn't kill you. Be happy it was only your siblings. Ghoulish. And we all know it's ghoulish. And this woman knows it's ghoulish. And the lady doth protest too much, methinks. If she or the cake lady, if they were really confident in their decision, if they were really secure and they felt this really is the good thing, 
they wouldn't be lighting up a freaking cake and they wouldn't be making these posts and they wouldn't be writing books about how great it was that they were now trying to show to kids to convince the kids who, who obviously know better and they wouldn't be posting it constantly all the time. I'm so good. I made the right decision. I made the, you can, you can read them gritting their teeth in the posts because they know it's wrong. It's not, you, the guilt that you feel for this is not coming from me. I suspect neither of these ladies watch my show or listen to my show or listen to many other conservatives. I suspect they've probably ensconced themselves in as much of a bubble as they possibly can, ideologically. And I bet they just invite all of their pro-abortion friends to constantly affirm them in their bad decision. And yet they still know it's wrong. They are still racked by this nagging guilt. That is called your conscience. And you are not, oh man, you are not ever going to feel better by trying to ignore and suppress your conscience, by trying to deny the shame and the guilt that you feel. Shame and guilt are a healthy thing. They can be a healthy thing at least because they're telling you you're going down the wrong path. You can turn around. The shame and the guilt is not, it's not the end of the story, but you, it, it, it's, it's like how we feel pain right? You, it's good that we feel pain. It's good that we feel pain because we know that we're in danger. When I put my hand on a hot stove, I'm glad that I can feel pain because I know, get my hand away, do something different. Same thing here with our moral conscience. Did you like that clip? Good. I'm glad. Ring that bell. Subscribe. Get the notifications. Head on over to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, wherever you get your audio podcast. Subscribe to The Michael Knowles Show. Leave a five-star review, and I'll see you next time.